Hi, Porik here from Attitudes, and welcome to another Adobe After Effects tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to continue where we left off from before. We had created a 3D box, we had added some text, and messed around with the different textures to get the effect we wanted. So the first thing I want you to do, is if you haven't seen the previous tutorial, you can find it on my channel here. There it is there. Um, you can go ahead and watch that and follow what I say there. And if you have done this tutorial or seen this tutorial already, then you should know we have saved a file called Edit Pro Attitudes Project, and we're going to load that now and start. So we're going to go to File, Open Project, and Attitudes Project. And there's the room we had created before. Yours is probably looking maybe slightly different, but it's still the same kind of concept. So what we're going to do here is we're going to add some light to give it a nicer effect. It looks full bright at the moment, and if you want that, that's fine, but if you don't, here's an option. So, we're going to go to New. We're going to go to Light. Okay, make sure the lot ty light, type, bleh, light type is on Spot. And then we're going to bring the intensity down to about 100 to get an idea of what that's like. Okay, you can change this once it's in the composition, so it's not a big deal. Same with the color. So, something about there. And click OK. Now as you can see, this light is um, in our composition now, down here, but also it's way too far into the 3D room, and nothing is lit up except the back room and a part of the text. So the first thing we want to do is make sure we're on our selection tool. We're going to put the mouse over the blue bit, till it says Z again. We're going to left click, hold down, and move your mouse left or right till it pulls back. Okay. Now, you can also do the same thing for X change the axis this way, left click hold down on the red and you can do the same for green, left click hold down and move around. You can also move this cross here, kind of like a direct effect of the light, it looks like a satellite dish, so you can move the cross air effect here okay, and move it slightly up. Now it doesn't look much like a lit room, <laughs> but what we're going to do is we're going to go down to light here on the composition, we're going to explore down using this triangle so we get to light options, I'm going to click down again, and then you can see we have the in intensity and the color and all them options we had. So go to intensity, left click in onto the text, and move your mouse um, all the way, now you're ignoring the back wall for this, and just look, look at the side walls and the floor to determine what light you want, okay, ignore the back one for now. So, let me see, but there is good for me, I don't want too bright. Okay, so there we have the light set. But as you can see, the back wall is overexposed, which basically means has too much light. So we're going to click on the, we know it's not a floor texture, we know that's a wall, so we can click on the wall textures, because we renamed them earlier on, till we get the wall we want. There we go. That's the wall there. Okay, um, so you can even click on the eye to make sure you're dealing with the right wall. There it is. Once you know which, which one you want to change, you can change them all, but for this one I'm going to show you how to do just one wall. Okay, so you right click on it, click and move to effect color correction and you're going down to exposure okay so our exposure controls have gone over here beside our project and we're going to go to the exposure under master in case that's like that and go to master click thank you and then you go to exposure and on the yellow orangey text you left click hold down and we're going to go left with the mouse now and as you can see we're bringing the exposure down on that back wall so as it matches a lot more now as I say, you can do this for every single wall and the text and everything else, but for the quick tutorial that I'm doing, I need the time, so we leave it there. So now, you can see the wall is kind of, the, the, sorry, the ceiling is kind of underexposed, so you can change that as I say and do what you like with it. But for now, that that's going to do us, okay, because we just want the basic, you know, light effect in the room. Now, we've got positioned the light where we want it, and we have... Um, We've gone in and, you know, changed everything we wanted in the different sections and overexposures. And you can do this with every wall. I'm, I'm not going to for the time that we have. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a text to put on the back wall, okay? So, again, you, you could just go up here, okay, to the type tool and just click in here and start typing and whatever, okay? And that's fine. You could do that and then move it to where you want it using the selection tool. But as I kind of already have the text here that I like, I'm just going to hit Control D. 
Okay, well I have attitude selected the text layer. Okay, I'll delete that one I made earlier on. Okay, so I have the text here I like. I'm going to hold down Control and hit D, and then I get an attitudes too. Now because essentially I've just copied all the details from this text, the position, the rotation, the color, everything, they're in the same place because essentially I've copied the position and all. So it's going to make this a lot harder to work with. But a nice trick is to go over here till you get to the eye looking thing, the eye icon, and that's going to show and hide a layer. So we can hide the first layer and work on the second one, which is going to make things a lot easier. So I'm going to click that till it's off. And there we go. Now, even if we select this, we can see that it's not going to do anything. It doesn't give us the options to move around. So we're going to go to Edit Shoots 2, or whatever your text is called, and go to Selection Tool. I'm going to move over, mouse over the blue, you guessed it till we get Z. Left click, hold down, and then just move your mouse left or right till it goes to position you want okay I want that on the back wall okay let me see okay that's about good now once that's done click back on the selection tool and just move the text click on the text left click hold down and move it to where you want okay now I'm gonna bring the camera down to kind of dead center in the middle of the room okay as best as I can it doesn't have to be perfect okay so about there that'll do as I said, that, that text is nicely in there for me now. I'm, I'm actually going to resize it down just a little bit. So I click on the corner, left click and just bring it down a little bit. That's just nice. So now we have the text finished and we don't have to work on this anymore. You've got what you like. We're going to show the original text again. So here we go. We're going to click on attitudes and click on the eye again. Okay, and there you go. Now we go to a 3D, rind 3D camera, uh, big pardon, and we move around. That's a, that's a nice effect, I think, personally. You have the text floating in the front and the text in the back. But that's not good enough for us. We want we want more. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to create an animation for this room. Whereby we zoom into the word attitudes, we stay there for a second, and then we zoom past the word attitudes onto the word tutorials. Okay? Now, fiddly bit here. We're gonna go down to camera. We're gonna explore down, triangle here. We're gonna go down to transform and we're going to select position okay but bef before we do anything down here now we're going to go up to the camera tool left click and hold down and you're going to get a lot of options here we want to go to the very bottom one track z camera tool okay that's it now we're going to on the position under camera we're going to click the stopwatch and that's going to create a keyframe before you do this make sure your timeline is on the very start of the uh, timeline so we're going to click the stopwatch and that's going to create a keyframe as you can see here. Now what I'm going to do is, using this tool that I showed you how to get, the Track Z Camera tool, I'm going to take my, um, take my mouse, put it over the preview window, and I'm going to hold down and just zoom in to about there. Okay. Um, whoops, I made a mistake there. Okay, what I want to do is go forward first before you before you zoom in or do anything. Go forward to about two seconds. Okay, doesn't have to be exact. And then <laughs> then you can hold down, left click, hold down and move forward till you get to attitudes, like so. Right? Now I'm gonna move along another two seconds on the timeline. And I'm going to just zoom in a tiny bit more just a tiny bit just till you get attitudes that'll do now I'm going to move along to what we on now four seconds so we're going to go to six seconds and I'm going to take the mouse left click hold down I'm going to push past the word tutorial uh, attitudes till we get to tutorials okay so like so okay and then for the last one um, I'm going to go to eight seconds there, I'm going to take the middle mouse. Sorry, big pardon. The, the mouse tool, left click, hold down, push back, and I'm going to move all the way out. Okay. So now you're done with keyframes. Okay, I know that was five keyframes, but it was fairly simple and, you know, easy to follow. We see attitudes there. So it floats in attitude for a while, and then it goes through to tutorials, and then I want it to move back. So, to there, right. 
Now, what you can also do, if you want, is you can left click, hold down, and go to Unified Camera Tool. And while you're doing this, you can add a little bit of left, add a little bit of right, use a keyframe on that, and do what you like. But essentially, I want the nice clean zoom in effect, so that's why I use that, okay? So now what I'm going to do is, well, okay, we're finished with, the, with the, the intro so far, and it's only at 10 seconds, roughly. So I'm going to bring the left hand, see this here? The work area end bit. If you put your mouse over that, it goes into arrows, two arrows facing different directions. If you left click and hold it down, seconds, we're bringing it about to 11 seconds, I think that's just fair. Okay, so about there. Okay, now, with the with the grey area here, okay, the work area, we're going to right click with the arrows like this and we're going to go turn comp to work area and what that does is it removes all the stuff that you don't want so all you're left with on the timeline is what you've, you're have you going to use for your intro, okay now, the intro, the music I use for my intro, you know, is called Pinball Spring it's from um, Comtech, okay, now if I take pin, Pinball Spring and let's say I just use that, okay, which is what I use for my standard intro so I'm going to take Pinball Spring that's in my project, and I'm going to left click and drag it onto my composition. Okay, here we go. Now, what we're going to do is, we're going to do a RAM preview, where we can test the effect, the zoom, 3D, everything. And to do that, you press numpad 0, and here we go. And once it gets to the last frame, we'll get a preview of exactly what this looks like. I'd like to say thanks again. And there we go, it's played through. So if I go back to start, and the music was loud there, gave me a fright, I don't know about you. But to change the music, the audio, we're going to click down into Pinball Spring. We're going to click down into Audio, and there's the levels, okay? So we're going to bring that back to about here. I'm going to try it again by pressing numpad 0. That's much better. So as you can see, um, that's ready to go now. You can now render that, okay? And how you render is, you go to Composition, and you go to Add to Render Queue, okay? Now, what I want you to do for a personal favor to me, is I want you to render this, save it, and upload it to this video as a video response, okay? I want to see what, you, what how you got on with After Effects, how you've got on with my tutorials, and I'd like to see your, your videos on this effect. So, upload your video as a video response, and I'll let you know, come onto your channel even, maybe subscribe, whatever, if it's good. So, anyway, we're going to go to the render queue down here. You click output to to change where you want the thing to output to. I'm going to go to QuickTime. So, you can call it what you like. I'll call this wall intro. Oh, not intro. Intro. Okay, I'm just going to save there. Now, what I do for my render settings is, okay, I learned this from somewhere and I can't remember where, but if you have um, QuickTime on your, installed on your PC, I use QuickTime, because it's, it's just a handy small format for, for doing these things. Now, once on QuickTime, go to Format Options, and go down to Sorensen 3, okay, and don't touch the frames per second, because that's, you don't have to worry about that. Just put your quality on Best, and OK. And we have audio in this that we want to be heard, so we're going to click audio output. You can change it to what you like, I'll leave it on 48 for now. And then you click OK. OK. So that's ready to render now. OK, we haven't saved anything or done anything, that's just the settings. So to render that we click here. OK, and then the yellow line is going to fly along. And once that's done, where you saved your video, you'll have a nice new movie called wallintro.mov. Well, thanks again for coming to my tutorials, and as I say while that was rendering, don't be afraid to upload your video as a response to this one, and let me know how you got on with my tutorials. I hope you liked them, and I hope they were helpful, and I look forward to any of your comments, and don't forget to rate and subscribe. Thanks again, this is Porik from Attitudes.